this week on the show. It's when I got reached out to you for Listen to Your Heart, The Bachelor Show. Uh, how was that experience for you, if you want to share? It, it was as unique as you probably could try to imagine if you hadn't been on it. You kind of have to go in with as much mental preparation for being out of your comfort level as possible. So like, oh man, I'm going to be challenged. Yeah. I'm going to be so uncomfortable. Gabe Baker. Lord, won't you take me away and never bring me back to this place. Take me away and never bring me back to Singer, songwriter, musician. Uh, songwriting has been a very, very beautiful experience. I, right. I remember writing my first song, probably, I think it was my senior year in high school. I actually joined a, a band. Uh, me and my good friends from our orchestra, we actually created a band. It was like a funk soul band. And I ended up writing two, a couple songs there. And it was the first time, like, doing songwriting but i never really thought of it as like a, a regular practice to to really hold on to um until like last year reality star i saw that you did three reality shows so when did yeah. you decide to oh. do do the first one again gabriel my life is very random uh and i accept that it's, mine too it's just i i saw you uh when i first wanted you on i saw you on vision of representation i think it's called yeah, and yeah. uh she had my friend on so I, I i followed her and everything and then i saw you on i was like oh is that the guy from bachelor listen to your heart and i was like oh uh, the guy who uh, savannah broke up with oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> and i watched that let's talk to gabe baker on the very creative podcast Gabe Baker, how are you? I'm doing so well, Gabriel. <laughs> I'm always happy to meet other Gabes and Gabriel. So yeah, is your name just Gabe? I'm a, I'm a Gabriel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So I, why go with Gabe uh, for your career was, and everything? Yeah, I think it was more just like a nickname that you know when you're little people call me Gaby. And yeah. Then Gabe, and then it just it just kind of just kept. The way that it was you know i respond to both of you know so i've you know i not a not uh of course not disgraced or anything from the gabriel i love gabriel yeah uh, yeah just kind of stuck with it and uh so there you go <laughs> now i get it my my because i i'm also like my first language is french i'm from montreal and my nickname is gab in french so uh, when i went yeah. to um, here we have CJEP before university. So when I went to CJEP, I went to finally an English school. So yeah. people started calling me Gabe. I was like, oh, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I liked it. Now it's my Instagram handle. So I guess yeah, that works. That's great. I guess that's where it is now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So introduce yourself to everybody. Yeah. So hello, everyone. My name is Gabe or Gabriel Baker. Um, I am currently based in Nashville, Tennessee, but I'm Texas born and bred. I, I'm a, I, I proudly represent Texas. And so right. people who know me know I do that. But I was born and raised in San Antonio. Well, I was, I'm sorry. Born in Dallas, raised in San Antonio, Texas. But I was in Houston for college uh, and then for another six years. So a total of 10 years in Houston up until this past July where I moved back to where I moved up to Nashville. And so I'm a, I'm currently, I'm a, I'm a, you know, a, a musician, a songwriter, um, uh, a singer songwriter and a, a cellist as well. Yeah. So that's my creative expression on the music side and me really leaning into the, this freelancing music realm has opened up opportunities as you know, I'm a fitness trainer out here and I'm diving into the acting and modeling side. So it's kind of like yeah, a that. cool mix of stuff. And I, I've, I've thoroughly loved my eight months here in Nashville. Yeah, I, I saw you uh, when I first wanted you on. I saw you on Vision of Representation, I think it's called. Yeah, that's and right. yeah. I think the, the girl is from Montreal as well. And yeah. uh, she had my friend on. So I, I, I followed her and everything. And then I saw you on. I was like, oh, is that the guy from Bachelor Listen to Your Heart? And I was <laughs> like, oh, uh, the guy who uh, Savannah broke up with. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I watched that. Exactly. You watched yeah. it. Cool. I'm glad you watched it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Bachelor fan, but I won't bother you too much with Bachelor that's, questions. That's yeah. okay. I'm here for it, too, if you want it. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, well, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess let's start with, um, I'm interested in this podcast to dive deep into how you started and uh, how you started to where you're now. So uh, talk a bit about growing up and uh, just finding your way to to music. Yeah, yeah. I grew up in a very, uh, man, just an incredible, incredible just upbringing environment. And, and I tell people I, I, and everything, everything that I am today is a credit to God and my, my parents. I mean, that just is really, yeah, I, I think about the habits that I have, the way that I think, the things that I value, and it's all, I mean, we're all products of our growing up environment in different ways, right? And so two incredible loving parents um, who are spent most of their, most about half of my life in the full-time Christian ministry in, in different capacities. And before I was born, they were, overseas missionaries and just serving and loving people um in so many ways and they moved to dallas they were in johannesburg um for a number of years but right before i was born in in 91 they moved back to dallas texas and that's where i was born and yeah so i'm the youngest of three i have an older brother and the eldest sister uh all all really close and you know our parents did a great job and uh of just creating a really just open creative just learning environment to explore curiosities is as how I see it. And um, so my parents are both musical and they're both okay. athletically geared. So that also just opened the door of like, oh yeah, we can do both or we can explore both. Right. So um, mainly a sports guy all growing up. And um, yeah. so I think the first sport I played was soccer and my, my dad was a track athlete. And so we, he took us out to the track all the time. So me and my brother running track and, uh, played basketball and soccer, did some karate, some gymnastics when I was little. And then football, I picked up football last right in the fifth grade. Um, and then I picked up the cello in the fourth grade, which right. was interesting. So my siblings both played string instruments and I jumped in the, the string instrument realm. And that had that was a beautiful added aspect to my life um, and was able to play the cello just in different capacities and string ensembles in the orchestra there with the private teacher all through high school, which was great right. alongside doing sports. And so it was a, it was a really, really cool combination, which I so, so grateful for. Um, yeah. And all the while, you know, just, just being me, being a kid, our parents were, I think I, yeah. So your question of, you know, what, tell me your upbringing. I, I think about so many aspects of my upbringing, but I think about just how, beautiful of a experience I had just in the community. I, uh, the Northeast side of San Antonio that I grew up in just a, a very multi multi-ethnic community. The church I grew up in was a, a, a real basis for the community that, that I, that I have, that I had as well, the relationships of friends and a lot of them I'm, I'm still connected to to this day. And so was grateful to get a, 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 a scholarship to play football at Rice University. I had another couple other opportunities, other places. And, took that rice rice is in houston right in the middle of houston texas and yeah so that was 2010 and um yeah so that's that end of the expression so the upbringing was all that just being with family right uh really exploring a lot of a lot of interest it was just a beautiful blessing yeah uh and you talked a little bit about uh well a lot about how you uh your your religion is really important to you and i just dive deeper into that how, how does that uh connect to your music and how because you you said i i read something that you said my faith in god is the foundation of, in my life mm -hmm. uh so uh, explain all that yeah you know I, I think as you know people um i think we we are all on a journey but in our right. own individual journeys of the soul, right? And discovering the purposes that we're here in our finite existences physically. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm in exploring and engaging in that aspect. I think that's taken shape even more, I guess, intentionally as I've grown and matured of knowing why I believe what I believe. And, um, and so my, the, the roots that I have as a, in, as a Christian and that, uh, in, in spirituality in that way, uh, is gives me just the values that I live according to in terms of just respecting and loving others and and understanding what it, what it means to love God means to love everyone uh, yeah. to the best of, that I can and and being that extension of service and 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 uh, and in uh, um, and, and, and it and it just takes shape in so many ways so I, I do my best to really 
have a, a, a really just, I don't know, round and sober perspective on living life and what's most valuable. And like, okay, right. you know, trying to, and, and, and allowing that perspective to, to even look at the things that God has put on my heart to pursue, the passions that I have, the pursuits, and, and then being open to the, the mysteriousness of how life leads because mm. life is, is so much out of our control and mysterious. And I think having the foundation of my faith a lot has, has rooted me in a lot of revealed truth. I was just relying on uh, the, the teachings in, in, the, in the biblical scriptures, but also being open to engaging in whatever the, the things that we don't know and right. like th- that all the which that we don't see and 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 realizing that there's always a reason for things happening the way they should even if they're not what we want um, yeah and so there's it just gives purpose and meaning to to the moves and the directions and the the things that happen in life um, as much as i can understand right. in my little brain yeah I think it's always interesting for me uh, because I didn't gr- grow up religious at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, none of my family is religious, really. I mean, my my grandmother might be the 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 most religious of a, them all, and she's no longer with us, so I can't like have this discussion with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's always interesting to me, especially as creative and like uh, I don't know. It's a uh, it, it's it's interesting to to see how it affects your life, how you yeah. make the decision you do because of it, and uh, yeah, it's always been interesting. So yeah, I, I definitely hear where you're coming from because at the, and, it, and it is one of those things of like you, everyone I think is needs is it's a healthy thing and a needed thing for everyone to 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 know to get to the point of of taking responsibility for the things that you value, the things that you believe in and, and not working out of doing things just because you, that's what you're used to, but being open to the journey and like, okay, what is and and just d- working to discover truth, you know, yeah. and, and as we're adventuring. So I, I really appreciate that question because it, it definitely sparks a lot of thoughts. Yeah. Me. Nothing stays buried forever. Especially not the past. Yesterday is Not Yet Gone, a mystery novel by Gabriel Vega, host of the Very Creative Podcast. Available now, paperback and digital. GabrielVega.com. Buy it now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, then you said uh, you you went to college, right? To Yeah. And you did football or what did you study? Yeah. Yeah. So I was, uh, yeah, I played, you know, American football here. Uh, right. so that wasn't my major, but it was like a full-time job. Right. Um, but my, uh, sure. <laughs> in my undergraduate degree, I was an, I was an environmental en- engineer major. So, yeah. um, I tell people I loved my degree, but I feel like I scratched my way through it. I had yeah. Some great, uh, yeah. Great professors, great study groups that helped me get through it. Um, what was your goal doing that uh, yeah. right at that time in your life? You said you just yeah. wanted to go to college, but what right. what what uh, what what sparked that uh, interest? Yeah, so that interest in that degree, yeah, I had the aspiration to work in like sustainable energy, um, some aspect of focused on on energy and the environment, as right. broad as it sounds. And so I was open to exploring that and whatever that looked like. And so that degree really gave me that direction to. Right. Yeah, to to give me a, a foundation of knowledge that could open up opportunities post college, yeah. right? Um, and fitting very fittingly, I did work as an engineer after college. Um, I tried to go, I tried to play professional football. Things fizzled out, and it was just how it was supposed to be. And then I worked as a civil engineer, so it was yeah. a little outside of my degree. But I worked in designing roadways and highway highways for roads and highways for a couple of years, which is a great, good, challenging, beautiful experience with a great company. And then. Um, but I knew I tell people I scratched my way through it because I feel like I'm not, I wasn't so naturally geared to like the side of academia. I'm yeah. more on like the humanity, like social sciences of like things of like more, more geared towards people issues. Um, and so right when I graduated and I got into my first engineering job, I actually went to seminary as well. So I got a master's in theological studies and studied Christian theology um, and that was a big aspect. I've done a lot of ministry, Christian ministry work with my home church in Houston at the time. And, um, and so it was me, again, being open to exploring like, Hey, what do I like? What I don't like 
let me not be afraid to jump in and try this engineering career. If it's for me, yeah. it's for me. If it's not, let me be open to wherever else God's going to lead. And so, uh, in short, after that, I got a great opportunity to work for the local county mayor of the county, which is um, not so the city. Um, in yeah, I guess yeah. It's I was trying to think of the equivalent in Canada, the like counties in the U.S. Um, uh. Because yeah. w- what's the governmental breakdown? And this is super an aside. You have the cities. I don't know, honestly. Have, but, uh, yeah. You have like the. Yeah, I'm on the spot here. I know, I'm putting you on the spot. What, tell me about the government in Canada. No, I'm joking. But essentially, it was like the local county mayor. Yeah. yeah. Which, is, which is not the I city know what mayor. you mean. I just don't have the word the for it. Municipal, yeah, it's okay. But essentially, I, so I, I worked in like. Municipality. Government, think, yeah. yeah, the municipality. I started working in the local government doing policy work. Um, right. And again, it was really, man, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, a, a, a career angle that I actually cont- have aspired to continue to grow in and working just in that space of civic engagement and kind of working uh, either that being nonprofit or or more for the go- local government in the side. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's in, in terms of describing my college career and then post college. I worked. Yeah. At, I studied engineering, was on the football team, did all that stuff. Actually, yeah, I didn't do as much cello when I was in college, but I did a little bit to where I that was, was my next play. question. If yeah, you yeah, were thinking about music during that time, I, I was, I was, I was always thinking about music and the main expression was like just leading worship at church and, right. and singing in that kind of way. And I loved it, but it never was like, oh, this is my thing because football was my thing. Right. And uh, obviously just getting through school and just being a part of the campus experience. I loved living on campus. Yeah. If Rice University I've, is a huge, huge place in my heart. It's a beautiful, private, beautiful community, really, really tight-knit, right. pretty small university, undergraduate size. And um, yeah, so I was doing music. I, I, I remember other musically when I was in co- other musical expressions that I had in college was I played in the orchestra for non-majors for one semester. Right. It was super cool. And then I took a private, I got lessons from a private, I got private lessons from a, a grad student there and then i broke my hand during football practice right. and then i couldn't take lessons so it was kind of a, a collision of two worlds at the your 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 two worlds are the two worlds that's right you're so you're most invested in our crash exactly know? exactly so but yes yeah, so i did my best to grow in music and it's always been a part of me though mm-hmm. right yeah um yeah college is is tough i i have to say from from living through that experience myself yeah um uh, yeah it's it's like now i'm i'm about to turn 25 mm-hmm. and i'm about to do a master's and i i don't look i look back at my undergrad and i'm like yes i knew what i wanted to do uh but it's kind of a weird time, you know, your brain is going through so much. Uh, you're yeah, like, you're, you're just off of high school. Uh, yeah, and yeah. you're like, Oh, there's girls. There's uh there's people everywhere. There's uh like, uh, cause my, my school had like 300 people, my high school. So mm-hmm. it's like, Oh, a big new thing. Uh, people are partying all the time and <laughs> there's sororities yeah. and it's, it's all strange, you know? After four I, years, you're like, okay, I get it now. I completely agree with that. Yeah, I think co- college is beautiful. It's not for everyone, and but I think it is. It is one of the ultimate, if you use it correctly. Yes. One of the ultimate experiences to really discover yourself because you you have access to a lot of different just pockets of knowledge and relationships all in one right. space. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, I loved it. So. Um, were you uh, considering because you, you said football didn't work out so yeah. i'm guessing that's what you, you wanted to do right yeah I, I definitely had the aspiration to play professional football i i knew I, I i had the ability to do it but then in the sense of like you know a lot of it is oppor- opportunities open up and if they do they don't if they do whatever happens after that what is is what happens like you get a spot or you don't or if they don't open up that's what happens, right? So it's one of those things to where things got things just have to line up. There's it's a really small percentage of college athletes that make it to the professional level, regardless of how talent. I mean, if you're the more talented, the higher chances, of course. But um, yeah, I feel like I, I definitely gave it the best shot I, I could, uh, but was very surrendered to wherever that would lead, whether that was to the to playing professional, 
sports or just to another professional career, right? And so yeah. uh, I think it was an answered prayer, even though it was, you know, it was, mm. just, it was what it was. It was because yeah. I, I, I gave a, my prayer during that time was just one of surrender. It was like, hey, wherever I need to go, just make it clear, God, and uh, I'm going to go that way. And he made it clear, and it wasn't football. So, yeah. Um, so I was, was your there. hand the breaking point? It was not, actually. Okay. The hand broke uh, a year before I, I did the, the NFL tryouts. <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> that's, that's funny, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, what happened? You said you, you worked for, for uh, the city and government uh, policy yeah. and everything. When did you decide to just, uh, uh, I, I guess I want to ask music, but uh, yeah. I saw that you did three reality shows. So when did yeah. you decide to oh. do, do the first one? Again, Gabriel, my life is very random. Uh, and I accept that. It's, Mine too. It's just explorative. We're all, yeah, we all, as, as if you're, I feel like being creatives, um, I think because I think if you, you lead with the sense of like an open mindedness to opportunities, man, things just happen, right? And so when I transitioned out of football, I had a good buddy who was training, who was in the American Ninja Warrior, that realm of competition. And I told him, hey, if I don't go professional football, I want to start training with you just to do something I've never done before, something completely different. And, so I started training with him that year and I competed on the show in 2016. And then I got pushed to another show on Netflix called The Ultimate Beastmaster and competed on that yeah. show. So you can watch that on Netflix still. I'm on season two, episode two. Super, super fun experience. And then... Um, and then that's it? The, you're not on the season after that? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, the, the how the season... Well, I guess I kind of gave a spoiler. Um, oh. There's 10 episodes <laughs> per season. In, in the Ultimate Beastmaster show, and you kind of have a featured episode of when you compete. Okay. And it takes you through it, right. and so if you win your episode, right, you compete in ep- your you compete against all the champions of their episodes in episode ten. Right. So I got pretty far, but I didn't make it to compete in the final episode to say that. Okay. Least. So yeah. you, if you watch the show, if you're familiar with the show, you you can kind of you you'll understand the concept of what I'm saying, but. Yeah, so I didn't win the show, but I had an incredible experience and I loved it. Um, but yeah, that was just the expression of me. Just want, I'm I'm a competitor and I love I stay fit and moving around. And I was just trying things out, you know, and having fun and staying competitive. Yeah. And yeah, and so and then about was that two years after that show? No, almost three years. Three years after I competed on that Netflix show is when I got reached out to for Listen to Your Heart, the Bachelor show. Yeah, um, and that was out of the blue as well. Um, and, uh, but again, I was like, you never know what could lead from this or what is such a unique experience opportunity that I was like, I just felt led to, to being open to what could come from it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, I have a confession for you. I, I, nothing stays buried forever, especially not the past. Yesterday is not yet gone. A mystery novel by Gabriel Vega, host of the Very Creative Podcast. Available now, paperback and digital. GabrielVega.com. Buy it now. I I um I have a confession for you. I I uh, applied uh, to be on the the Bachelorette uh, several times. Um, the 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 best time I'd say is uh, last year, uh, New Year. Yeah. And I was I found a bunch of producers on Instagram, and I was like, uh, "Help me out! Ha- help me out! I I need to find love." Uh, and I don't know. It was a, a cheesy line, but it worked because I got reached out by a producer, oh, and yeah. uh, and she was like, "Oh, send me pictures and everything." Right, and right, uh, right. and then I had a phone call with a, a producer, mm-hmm. and uh, she was like, "Oh, you're amazing!" I, I felt amazing by the by the the phone call because I was honest and I was like super uh, pumped about it, and mm-hmm. uh, she she seemed to like me. And then she was like, "Oh, I'm gonna call you back uh, uh, either." way you know if it's if it goes your way or if it doesn't never heard back from her (laughs) never heard back (laughs) so i was like okay and i'm glad i didn't reality with these things yeah Yeah, i'm glad i didn't because um my relationship with the show is sometimes i hate it and sometimes i Mm. because i sometimes i feel like they play with people and they uh, especially during the editing process and uh, yeah, you can tell me more about that, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, how, how was that experience for you, if you want to share? Sure. It, it was, 
as unique as you probably could try to imagine if you hadn't been on it. Because it's, I mean, it's, it's real. It's being in any kind of TV, ex, you know, experience is super, super surreal. Um, you got all the lights around you, cameras around you all the time, and then being on reality TV specifically is even, I think, an, a different type of uniqueness. And um, yeah, so you kind of have to go in with as much mental preparation for being out of your comfort zone out of your comfort level as possible so like oh man i'm going to be challenged yeah i'm going to be so uncomfortable and but you have to be open to it and ready to and i think the the most the i guess the most success that one can have in the space is trying to be knowing your objective going in and knowing yourself and the yeah. more you hold to that those two things i think the most the more the most successful quote unquote you can be going in it of like just trying to stick to your own guns and mm. being as natural as you can and try to and it, again yeah some people again i think reality tv is one of the things like it's for some people and it's, for, it's and it's not yeah like in terms of finding comfortability or whatever it is in that that space sometimes it's just like yeah, it's it's not for you and that's okay yeah. You know, but because it, it's just like anything, some things work for you and some things don't. Um, uh, so yeah, that's it, it is an interesting thing. Um, yeah, yeah in short, that's what that's what my experience was. I, I was so focused, I was really, really focused on the people I was going to meet, um, right? And obviously, the uniqueness of the, the experience and what all that could mean in time, right? Yeah, and just trying to be myself and trying to be, you know, as a Christian, you you want to be example, an example of, of the love of Jesus wherever you go, just loving right. others and being, uh, just being myself, serving and trying just to do that, not trying to, but I, there's so many things, yeah, there's so many other aspects to it, but it was just such a unique experience that, you know, just happens and it, it's over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like it's a, uh, like when I first saw the trailer and uh, cause it was right uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, it was right. a, a nice uh, first break uh, of the pandemic entertainment, right. exactly. Uh, um, exactly. which I was thankful for. Uh, but it's an interesting concept because as a creative person, I, I can relate to, um, to it because uh, two people falling in love through music and that are both singers, musicians, songwriters, uh, mm -hmm. and cause I, I grew up, uh, acting doing acting classes and like finding that i have more and more in common with people that were actors you know and just uh like i i wanted to date them because i had a deeper connection with with that person so it was it's an interesting concept and i i, I related to it so yeah i don't know how yeah. you you felt about all, yeah. all of that is I, that I, what interested I, you yeah i was excited from it i mean yeah i'm in the place of I'm honestly, yeah, looking to find uh, that romantic connection with someone that could lead to, you know, a, a life together, a marriage. And uh, I really aspire to have that. I think, I, yeah. I think that's, that's really big on my heart. Um, and so, again, while this while the opportunity was super like uncustomary, if you will, or unconventional right. for me, um, I, I just wa I wasn't afraid to like be myself in that space. So like, OK. It's almost like I think a couple of friends we always they kind of share the same sentiment of like it's just speed dating with yeah you, right? <laughs> and yeah you, again within those kind of spaces you have full creative control yeah of how you navigate it from your personal action so um, but then again you're right you have to be willing a part of the you know part of the experience is being willing for you know whatever's produced and whatever comes out mm. of the shot you got to live with that because you don't have control over that part. Yeah, uh, but you have control over how even you if you're fully it. yourself, yeah. even if you're completely yourself and then being yourself in that space um, can very easily not be your normal self outside right. of that space. You know what I'm saying? So it, can, yeah. it, it kind of produces different emotions and different things just from it being a, a unique environment. And the, yeah, well, it's a show. It's a their yeah. sets, uh, <laughs> their cameras, like right. yeah. all of that on you, like yeah. you're. I'm sure you have lights on you all the time. You're like, uh, you know, right. and cameras uh, so, and you see producers while you're on a date and you're just like, yeah, right. that's not real life. <laughs> right. And you have to, you kind of just accept it because you're, you're really there and you're really right. giving of yourself and they give you that opportunity to do that. And they want, they, I mean, 
they really do want you like to have a, yeah. a successful experience but then it's like okay yeah there's this aspect that it is a tv show yeah right and so you got to have to find a bit of a balance and the, right. those those two worlds um and but i did love i think you may be i don't know if you hinted to it but or like suggested to this thought but i loved it, there being musicians on this in the space because yeah Musicians are a different type of creative, uh, right. and definitely a different kind of reality TV personality. Mm. Yeah. Uh, because I think we're 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 a little uh, we're a little more naturally a part of uh, a little more. I feel like a little more, especially if you are you you are a musician, you are a songwriter, whatever it is, you got to be more emotionally in tune with with yourself. Right. At least the more successful of an artist you are, to me, is connected to your ability to be more emotionally aware of yourself right yeah because beautiful music comes from really genuine places of vulnerability um and so i think that created for a cast of people that yeah. navigate the space differently than maybe a, a non-musician would going on to reality tv show yeah you know? so I, I that's what made it exciting because we had this commonality that was beyond the show of like hey we actually have mm. our brand and our personalities that that are not reality um yeah, and it was just it was cool. So there was this commonality that throughout it. Yeah, a lot of that's what I understand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly that. And especially when it got to like the competition part. Obviously, I wasn't there for that, but that just adds another layer right. of of relationship. Yeah, connection. yeah. Uh, do you feel uh, like this? Obviously, it gave you a, a platform, but uh, uh, do you feel like the show has helped you uh, creatively and in, in terms of your music and? to i don't know be I, I have the word better in in my mind but uh like has it made your music better has it ended it <laughs> how the th one of the big things that surprised me and i was open to what would happen from it from going on the show but one of the biggest things that the show really provided me was an incredible sense of like validation of like wow i love music right and i have something to offer in the music space and i really need to give my full effort in in growing mm. that and investing in that and i and that was a sense of clarity that i was really open to receiving and very intrigued if that would ever come in my life before that time you know so that was one of the many redeemable things that came from being on the show was getting this plate this deep a deep amount of inspiration just to to really really mm. go into music and from that show i after filming it i actually took my first trip to nashville shortly after we we shot the show met some great people one of the people that i met up in nashville is literally one of my closest friends here who owns the place i live in so that was the first time i met him and so it was a bunch of us just a great series of events that connected me to opportunities and relationships post show that right. has so much to do with where i am now mm -hmm. um just being Best, very, very focused and invested in, in music, and exp and yeah, just creative in the ways that I am creative now. Yeah, it has a lot to do with that yeah. opportunity, you know, and that being a stepping stone for where I am now. Yeah, and like you said, you had also like a bunch of people with you that were yeah. doing the same thing as you, yeah, and uh, exactly, exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah do you feel like uh if you would have stayed for the competition aspect of it uh it would have uh like challenged your music in a new way because you want to be the <laughs> yeah, i guess it, a winner or not right. or just uh like compete you know yeah if if i was there for the um music competition part yeah i it would have definitely been so so much different um, I, I don't know if i would have done very well to be honest right and i say that because i haven't had a lot and you don't have to have a lot of performance experience to do well on those shows but i just think back to where i was from a musical talent and expressive side and it i'm in i'm in so much of a more polished position now and this right. is just what well, just uh, uh about nine to ten months of just like curating my sound and, and just honestly being able to perform a, a good amount out here in nashville already and and so, uh, yeah, I, uh, to say the least, uh, yes, it would have had a, a, a huge, huge uh, impact on my creativeness musically. Uh, but yeah, it just would it. Yeah, it, it happens the way that it should have. Right. Me, right. It, and, and I'm very comfortable with that. Um, yeah. But yeah, it would have been interesting to see what, what would have happened if I continued on in the show. Yeah.
Yeah. Never know. We will never know, unfortunately, but that's okay. Are you going on another reality show soon? Oh, man. <laughs> is the question. I, I don't have any initial plans. I actually would love to go on Survivor. Right. I would love to go on the show Survivor. My room, one of my roommates here is a huge Survivor fan. Well, you're an athlete. You, you, I'm an you, athlete, too. You, you, you seem exactly to enjoy right. that. Yeah. And, and so we'll keep you posted if I end up going on that. But no, just, just uh, <laughs> living my normal non-reality TV life right now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like uh, the, the Bachelor, listen to your heart uh, show, just tired you out from the, that? Or was it before that? Tired you out uh, from uh, like tired me out from reality TV. Yeah, honestly, I'm not tired out from reality TV. No. I think it's a certain type of reality TV. You're not saying no to anything. <laughs> I'm not saying no to anything. I don't think I would do like a dating show again, though. Right. I don't feel too drawn drawn to that. There'd have to be something very convincing that, and just like some very, I don't know, deep connection with whatever opportunity was presented right. to me, that would convince me to go on a show like that again. Uh, cause it just doesn't seem like it, it's fitting for me and where I am. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm open to reality TV still. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it must be a it lot to, right, you know? yeah, yeah, of course. And it must feel weird to like, uh, a dating show is something else because you're really opening your heart and uh, it's not like a competition, yeah. uh, physically like survivor or anything like that. No, you know, exactly. you're really being like if you're if you're doing it well you're you're being vulnerable and true to yourself and that that takes a lot and it yeah. can go against you it can go for you and there must be oh. a lot on you oh yeah i think relationships in general is a lot on you right yeah. so then you take that space in that you add the situation TV. <laughs> and put it in like this weird realm where you're recorded the whole time that right. just makes it even more crazy right yeah. uh, so it's the it's the <laughs> It's a beautiful concept for a great for creating great TV, right? Oh yeah, uh, but yeah, it is. They've got it that down, down I think. They got it down. They got it down. Yeah, sometimes too much, but uh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So uh, let's go back to your music. Uh, what or talk about? Uh, uh, do you have an album in the the plans, or what's what's your your plan for that? Yeah. So I have yeah I have some music streaming now that I released last year. Um, yeah. I, have, I actually have a song coming out this Friday. So oh really this. awesome yeah 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 this uh, will air after that but uh, yeah. that's all right well <laughs> april 2nd is the okay. single that's yeah. coming out yeah just making sure so yeah. that'll be streaming um it's my first song that i wrote and perform on cello and singing oh awesome i've been flipped upside down Um, and so that's a new expression that I'm really focusing on in my artistry of making cello the main instrument that I perform with. And, and that's been really fun. And so, but yeah, moving forward, I definitely, you know, coming into 2021, I actually had the aspiration to, to releasing a song every month this year. Cause I right. have a lot of, I have a lot of songs and I really, really like them and want to get them out, but, um, just over that are already time, recorded. They're not recorded, but I was going to oh. engage in that process because I, I have the songs already at least written and, and uh, right. with with the openness of you know adjusting need be um but i've gotten some great just yeah just uh new just kind of insight into what kind of sound i want to really create and um adjusting my uh yeah just just finding a finding like my voice quote unquote in my artistry has come over time and so i'm not in a rush to release mm -hmm. these songs and just trying to find the right sound uh that i really want to package everything moving forward to connect with uh you know my listeners right so so you know lord willing i ha i'll have a couple more songs out before yeah. 2021 is over but i'm but i'm still i'm writing a lot i'm playing a lot um hopefully gonna be booking a lot of shows around as things yeah. continue to open up yeah talk a bit about uh just go back to uh you, you said writing and uh talk about your process how does that uh go on yeah uh songwriting has been a very very beautiful experience I, right. I remember writing my first song probably i think it was my senior year in high school i actually joined a a band uh, me and my 
good friends from our orchestra. We actually created a band. It was like a funk soul band. And I ended up writing two, a couple songs there. And it was the first time like doing songwriting, but I never really thought of it as like a, a regular practice to, to really hold on to um, until like last year, which is right. funny. So I had written, and then through the years, I had written some very random songs. I think over the last couple years, uh, my brother went to school for music, so he was really, mm-hmm. really um, incredibly talented and doing a lot there. And so we had been collaborating uh, through the years, and uh, I had started writing a couple songs inspired by family and different things. Um, yeah. I guess within the last like five years or so, but that again, it was never like a regular practice. It was an idea that like, hey, I'm open to engaging in it, but I never really took hold of it. And up until like right after the show basically right when the pandemic yeah. came into full swing and so i realized that, okay I, lo- I really enjoy songwriting i love to create i love creating and it's just okay let me just do it let me just engage in the process of leaning into whatever inspiration yeah. is on my heart at any given point and, and and putting it out there and so my creative process i'm sure like everyone it it isn't super concrete but there is a bit of a pro a bit of an approach to it right to where um, it is obviously leaning on it, whatever inspiration is, is flowing out at a given second. So it could be going through the day and I hear a melody in my head and I pull out my phone and I record on my voice notes and I may never touch it again, but I put it out there mm-hmm. or I could have it there for reference in the future. And I'm like, oh man, I want to write about this. What do I have any melodies that I've recorded in the past? So I, I have a, a huge, huge, uh, I guess, uh, collection of voice notes in my phone now. And then similarly, if a lyric comes to my head, if I'm having a conversation with someone or I see a sign or just living life uh, and I capture it and I write it in my notes and, and or song ideas. And so the creative process is always happening. Right. And, and that's the yeah. beauty of songwriting is that there's a song in every situation. Um, and it's a matter of like capturing it and then seeing where it goes. And then and I think being in Nashville, Nashville is such a hub for songwriters yeah. um, that uh, you can you approaching it now for myself as like a regular kind of a, 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 with the professionality behind it. Um, I'm engaging in it every day. Um, either I'm co-writing with someone else or I'm writing by myself. Mm. And, you know, I'm just building ideas and working on finishing songs. And mm. it's just and then as everything is uh, songwriting is a muscle. Uh, the mm. more that you write, the better you get. Yeah. And so um, and then yeah, so there's there's not a direct process. Sometimes I start with this there's a chord progression that I like on um, guitar or there's just a sound I heard on a show and I'm like oh let me try to take that and record it and then do something with yeah. it and re- recreate it on my cello, or recreate it on my guitar or whatever. Or yeah, so it's it's very flowy and I think that's the way that's the best way you should create because yeah, inspiration comes from so many sources. Yeah. Uh, you said it's uh, your writing process is like a non going all all the time. Yeah. Uh, I I I feel that because I'm a writer and I uh, I can get that. Uh, do you feel sometimes like because for me I'm thinking about the when I get an idea I'm thinking about it all throughout the day until I write it or whenever I I do write it all throughout the week you know. Yeah. And then uh, I write it, and then the revisions come when I'm done with the project. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then because I just published a novel, and I oh, I I just yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, but I I just did that, and I'm still like looking at it, and I'm like, oh, there's just things I could change. There's mm-hmm. things I you know, and it's hard to not to do that and it took yeah. a long time for me uh, at least six months to just get over it and yeah. just not look at it once you look at it again you're like oh god <laughs> let what me I write yeah yeah so do you feel that with music oh yeah for sure i think there's always growth and improvement in what you ever whatever you're working on you know and i think there's a balance to to really not being like engaging in the process but not being focused on perfection because right. you never be perfect and there's all and so I think especially with music projects and whatever it may be and releasing your own music or whatever it is, you know, one of the, one of the biggest lessons I've learned in my early career now is, is that, you know, it's be, it's been reaffirmed over time, but yeah, perfection is the enemy of progress, oh, yeah. you know, and especially with music that it's never going to be perfect, but I mean, make sure it's, you know, it's to your, you know, to your satisfaction, you feel great yeah. about it and you want to put it out, but 
if you're gonna wait for it to be perfect, don't you're not yeah. gonna put it, you're, you're not gonna ever put it out, you know. And so yeah. just grow and engage. And then when you put projects out, like I put songs out last year that I'm like, wow, I could see I sing much better now. I could probably <laughs> put out, I could probably put out a better song than I did last yeah. year with those songs. But it's good. I think you 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 leave it out there for the masses, and and then yeah. Do you feel the audience helps? Do I say it again? Do you feel the audience helps uh, just to uh, get rid of your idea of perfection after you just released it into the world? Perhaps they do help to an extent of, of if they like it. Perfection. I mean, yeah. yeah. Oh no, you're you're right. Yes, they do. Like you you can't control what your audience yeah. likes to an extent. Right. I mean, you can get a gauge of like, oh yeah, they like this kind of music, or I put this song out and they like this more. But you hear it from writers and artists all the time, like you can't control what song goes big or not. No. If they like it, they like it. Right. And, yeah. and, and if it goes big, it goes big, but it, and, and there's so many factors that are beyond your control yeah. and creative from, from how your art is received. Um, yeah. So it's focused on just, you know, uh, genuinely representing yourself as best as you can. And, and obviously being excellent at your craft and growing at that. And then, um, but then, yeah, just gr just engaging in the process. That's, mm. it, that's it. Engaging in the process and 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 walking that fine line of wanting your music to connect with people, but also not caring what people think about what you yeah. do. It's a weird combination, you know. what I'm saying of like, yeah, not being swayed by public perspective. Like, oh, I don't care what you think, but I actually do want you to like my music. It's a it's weird tough. Thing. It's really tough. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's the endless war, right? And you'll never win it. But yeah, it's 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 gauging those things of like, hey, am I doing this for myself and for the art? I think if you yeah. are focused on just the beauty and the and the, how much you love what you're doing, versus do people like what I'm doing? You're gonna have so much more of a sustainable career yeah. and enjoyable time if you focus on like just for the art and for the growth and for the relationships. You know? Yeah. It's a tough battle. It's, it's a, a tough battle. Uh, but yeah. you need, I feel like I've gotten better over the years with it. Uh, and you need the proper tools you do. to LT also tools that uh, uh, therapy has helped a lot for me. Um, just working out has helped a lot for me. Uh, just uh, taking taking breaks also. Like I... Mm -hmm. I would work on my stuff all the time if I didn't have the the mental thing that tells me, oh, you need to take a break, you know, because yeah, uh, it's super important. I, yeah. And I feel it if I don't take a break because I'm super tired all the time. I right, right. yeah, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I start to make mistakes. And that's the yeah, it's a it's a tough battle. Mm. Yeah, it is. It's it's, uh, you know, the you because especially being like freelancing creative like you you can create 24 7 right mm. there you can always have the you know the engines running yeah and yeah the it's really important to to find a balance between the grind um and the rest and active rest right that looks like and realizing that yeah you, you gotta it's important to yeah, focus on other things sometimes and yeah. live a normal life that isn't about hustle and bustle and making deals and but you know, it's just the integration of everything, right? Yeah. Do you want to plug uh, your songs that you have out and say uh what what inspired you to write them? Yeah, I'm open to it. Um the first song I released uh last May it was a song called Butterflies and so that's streaming. Um yeah. I wrote it about uh beautiful video by the way. The oh, the you. lyric video, beautiful. Oh yeah, yeah. thank you. I had a good, yeah, um, yeah. I had a, a a buddy help me out with it. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. I like it a lot too. Yeah, that song was inspired from a, a previous relationship to where, yeah, um, you'll hear it in the lyric, but the main chorus, the line in the chorus is that I wish there were more butterflies. And mm. I, um, 
there was a there was a there was a, a woman that I dated that uh, man she was an incredible incredible woman in in so many ways and uh, I really was hoping for it to go the distance but it it just didn't uh, yeah and, and mainly because I just I didn't feel as emotionally connected that I know I should have mm. uh, that I that I desired to but you can't control how you feel in that kind of way towards someone if it is it is if you feel feel something you feel something if you don't you don't and some, mm. sometimes you can't control that you know. Um, and so that's where it was. That song came inspired from that. And then I right. released uh, I released an EP, uh, four songs uh, called "The Year of Vision," uh, in November of this past year, and or that was October, late October. Mm. And that was inspired by yeah, just kind of lessons and my inspirations from 2020. Right, I think everyone learned so many things. Mm. And it's a kind of like a gospel acapella inspired song. I um, in church, I grew up with kind of singing, kind of soul gospel soul gospel acapella kind of music in in church and so that really is has a big place in my heart musically and so that album is kind of in that angle of production and sound mm. um and so yeah so the songs are it's it's kind of more christian spiritual messages in, in those in that package of songs but it is written from like yeah where I, where my heart was at from all the lessons learned from 2020 with all the different right. things happening through the year and then the, the most recent song i released in um december there's a song called Mother, which I had written a couple of years ago. And uh, my mom passed away uh, in December of 2019 from a battle with cancer. Right. And that Start. that was right before I actually went on the show, or right when I was deciding to go on the, the, the Listen to Your Heart right. show. And so that that's um, you know a, a very, very difficult experience. And uh, I, I've learned so much from it. I actually wrote, mm. the, wrote the song... Um, uh, I yeah I wrote it myself. Did some uh, kind of revisions with my brother at the time, but I wrote it uh, in yeah twenty. I think I wrote it Mother's Day of twenty nineteen, which is cool. So I played it for my mom uh, that year, um, and yeah, I was able to record and, and put it out uh, at the end of twenty twenty, and so that one's out in streaming called Mother. Uh, just a yeah, just a fun, a really great song. I really love. From the start of my life. Yeah, and the song coming out this Friday is called Upside Down. And I'm really pumped for it. I wrote it actually right, um, again, post, right after the show, the Listen to Your Heart show. And it was a cool inspiration. It's a really cool song, just uh, kind of this pop soul kind of vibe yeah. uh, about, you know, being upside down in life. Things not being yeah. as you like it, but uh, kind of focused on resilience, focused on like, hey, even though I'm upside down, I'm coming right back around. You yeah, know? and that's the energy of the song. So, I hope people yeah. enjoy it. If people are watching or listening to this podcast, this uh, this song is already out. So oh, that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you so enjoy go, it. Definitely go check it out. Now. Go listen to it. It's yeah. Streaming now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, all right. Before we go to a game and then end, um. Do you have any more tips? Because we talked a bit about mental health and our creative process, uh, but do you have any more tips for people uh, that are creative, that are not creative about mental health and your journey through that? Talk a bit about that. Right. Yeah. You know, my, some immediate thoughts that come through tips for, I guess, mental health and different things as a creative yeah. is, uh, I think it starts with like honesty and vulnerability. Those are connected. Um, those are probably like, the most meaningful and most challenging parts of being a creative is, is being honest with where you're at, uh, sharing that honesty with trusted people, the right people in, in, within the context that you need to. So, and it's not always cause, because it's, it's a fascinating thing that a lot of times beautiful art comes from really difficult places and people facing trauma mm. and, or, or um, really deep, uh, dark emotions that, you know, people, people have a lot to create a lot to use in order to create things because mm. we, we all live challenging lives and there's a lot of 
commonality between each of our human experiences in the in the difficulties of life right and so um there is a a, a really uh i think there's a high priority that needs to be taken with as you're expressing yourself musically and, and really trying to be a professional and whatever that is on the music side you got to have a healthy um balance of 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 being honest with where you're at so that mm. you are taking care of yourself as you need mm. to uh and maybe that is unplugging from social media unplugging from the things that are really causing you anxiety causing you to compare yourself that creates more problems so whatever those things are it's finding that balance of 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 honesty in that space and then i i yeah the vulnerability aspect is is, is just as connected of and i think it, yeah it's a part of honesty um, you can't be honest if you're not vulnerable um, yeah. but knowing yourself being willing to be like okay and am i struggling with something Mm. how can I be vulnerable about it? Because that's where, you, that's where you grow. And that's how you kind of create a balance because you're always wanting to have balance with how you're creating. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that's, that's a good question. There's a lot of answers to that, but those, those came to mind. Well, that's all great. Thank you for, for sharing all that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So our game is called the feel good game. Yeah. Uh, what's your feel good movie? Oh, I love movies. I so love movies. Same. I feel good movie. Um, Rush Hour Two. Okay, have you seen the Rush Hour movies with Yeah, Chris Tucker them. and Jackie Chan? Love them. So I, I have so many, but for me that that popped immediately to my mind. I, it's just so funny, and I, I I always love watching it. Yeah, is that from from being a kid and liking it? Uh, and yeah, like- yeah. We I remember watching it when we were younger for the first time, and I've always loved that. Rush Hour One is great. I like Rush Hour Two a little better. Rush Hour Three is good, but not as good as the first two. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I love Disney movies. I love like sports movies. The other movie that I was going to say, actually, I probably should have said is Remember the Titans. That movie, okay. it, Never oh, it's that. so yeah. nostalgic for me. Uh, Denzel Washington movie, it's, uh, stars in that movie. Right. A great movie based on a true story. Definitely. Ch- I encourage you to check it out. It's great. Yeah, I will. I, I've been wanted yeah. to check, to check it yeah. out. Yeah. Um, so feel yeah. good TV show. The Office. Easy, okay. easy answer for me. I love The Office. Yeah, yeah, my favorite TV show of all time. That's great. Uh, feel good song. Yeah, yeah. Feel good song. Uh, ooh, these are great questions. I love these. Um, it depends on the mood I'm in. Like, I think that certain certain music, certain songs can really draw me in based on what mood I'm in. Um, feel good song. Let's let's say. Uh, oh man. Um, I'm thinking like Stevie Wonder or Sam Cooke or Bill Withers right now. Let's say uh, Stevie Wonder, Signed, Sealed, Delivered. Have you heard that one? It's a great song. Sign I'm going to go listen to it. Yeah. yeah, listen to it. It's a good one. But it's a good feel-good song for sure. Okay, yeah. great. Do you have a feel-good album from start to finish? Ooh, feel-good album. Ooh, what, what, what just came to mind was John Mayer Continuum. John Mayer's Continuum album is one of my favorite albums. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah. Go. Yeah. I have we'll a lot of stuff to, to go. Yeah, it's all, it's all good. There's so much. There's so much out there to listen to, and 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 yeah. So, uh, yes, he was the first concert I've been to uh, to see John Mayer play in San Antonio way back in high school. First yeah. concert I've been to in my life. So. Oh, awesome! It was good, and he was touring on that album, so it was even cooler. So, great album, but, great album. Has he inspired you to to do what do you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, he's definitely one of my favorite artists. Um, great, incredible songwriter, incredible musician. So definitely an inspiration. That's great. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much yeah. for for coming on, and uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, man. It's it's been a great, great. conversation. The pleasure's all mine. Great conversation. Thank you for having me, and, and all the best with your podcast moving forward. Thank you so much. <laughs> Well, have a great day, and uh, yeah, I hopefully I can see you perform live someday, and uh, just uh, yeah, enjoy that your music. Great. I really enjoy your music. So thanks so much, man. Keep thanks working so at yeah. it. We we'll hope to see you in person one of these days. Sounds great. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Okay, Gabriel. Thanks. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Very Creative Podcast with Gabriel Vega. 
To find out more, go to gabrielvega.com slash podcast or find us on social media at The Very Creative Podcast. You can also watch the podcast on YouTube. Just search for The Very Creative Podcast and subscribe.